Thanks for having me again. Somehow I get managed into once a year now. Um, and we'll see. I hope you find it at least entertaining. Maybe you learn something, but uh, inspiration is really the idea because there's nothing I'm going to show you today that you can't do. If I can do it, you can do it because there's a lot of stuff you see. There's a heck lot harder to do than what I have here. So it's really more about the ideas and playing around with things. <laughs> so what is today about? Wooden purses. First, I'm going to do a little bit overview of the basics. I'm going through the three different purses I made. The fourth that is um, work in progress, or the never be done one, we will see how that works out. And then a little bit of lessons learned, respectively, what the sources, if I had any, were for this. So why am I doing this? What do I want from Woodburn? I want distraction. I want to try out new things. I want to see something. I want to have fun. I mean, I work for a living far too many hours a week in a job that is not that creative, right? I'm finance controlling. It's just one distraction. Creative finance <laughs> is, is kind of a little bit borderline, so I need another outlet. They, that's why I do this. I want to learn. I want the stimulation out of it. But I want to have usable results, too. I have sometimes a hard time to make Another piece that is just great to look at, as nice as it is, like making that puzzle. I really like it, but then, okay, what the heck do I do with it now? So maybe that's a few of my own pieces. They all go somewhere without me afterwards. But that tempted me on this purse idea. So I wanted something usable. Okay, so what do I want from a purse? Some of you, mostly the gentlemen, might or might not be able to relate to it, but yes, we do have purses and we carry them around for fun. And a weight to carry something around in it as well, not just as an ornament, but there needs to be a piece of beauty to it. If otherwise, I can take a plastic bag, which I really don't want to do. So material, it needs to feel right. right? You touch something, it's tangible, it doesn't, if you have a feeling like, oh, this is, yeah, I don't like to touch this, it's not a good material for a purse. It needs to be practical. If it has a lot of n edges, a lot of things that can pull, zip on my clothes, tear them, and you know, here another little string out there, another one, guess what, I wouldn't use that purse, right? You know this feeling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my purses are all perfect. <laughs> Your purposes are perfect. That's, I love that. Next one is on you, man. Um, but it's, you might laugh, but it's a consideration. If you have something that snacks your clothes all the time, you would not wear it because it ruins your clothes. Right? If I do this with, yeah, that you wear it once and then you're, yeah, no, I don't like that. So, weight. I know they look awfully heavy, but they're not. Because if I already have two pounds of purse, Guess what? It's not going to happen. And I'm not that tiny, but still, you don't. You want, there has to be still a decent balance. It has to be hanging at a comfortable height. It needs to be usable, and it has to have sufficient space. Remind me of that later, <laughs> because <laughs> it's like we want to cut once, measure twice, or cut again and measure again, and think you have it now, and then you still don't do it right. But that's okay. It has to be unique. Guess what? Um, your box elder purse will be unique. There's nobody else with the same one. And you're on the hook for that one, you know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, there's really the, the beauty about going somewhere. Well, oh, that's a nice purse because nobody ever has seen something like that. Good feeling, I have to admit it. It's, yeah, it makes you feel proud of what you do. And I personally like natural materials. So in general, with all of the three purses you can see, I tried to avoid to use metals, plastic, or anything like that. Emphasis on tried to, it didn't work out all the time the way I wanted it, but the idea was more on the natural side to stay with it. If you would flip the page for me. So, how did it start? Literally, once upon a time in a <laughs> parking lot, there was a row of maple trees. That parking lot belonged to a company I worked for in Pittsburgh, and there's a fly. Um, and fortunately or unfortunately for us, we needed. I did have a shower today, that fly <laughs> is, I don't know. Uh, we had to extend our parking lot because business was booming, the area we had for winter and Pittsburgh winter, you know, there's a lot of snow, a lot of mud. So yeah, um, 
Unfortunately, half of those maple trees had to go, which we made with, we didn't take it easy, but yeah, we had to do it. So they cut the trees down for the extension. Um, I saw the stuff laying there, pieces, <laughs> and um, realized, oh crap, they put them in the shredder. I mean, these were not big trees. I think the little picture there reflects the size pretty adequately. Um, so after work, and I said before, I'm in finance. So yes, suit, heels, done. Um, so more dressed up than today for sure. I said, oh, I have to get this now or it's gonna be gone tomorrow afternoon. So on my way home, I stopped with the car and with my heels into the field to grab a piece of wood while one of our service directors came by driving. Squee, oh, do you, whoa, what are you doing there? Everything okay? He's like, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine, thank you. I'm like, oh crap. This is embarrassing. <laughs> and then he kept driving on. I said, okay, I don't want to know what he <coughs> thinks now, seeing me standing there with a piece of wood in my hand. So yeah, next day he calls me and he's like, I'm so sorry I didn't offer to help you. I said, that's oh, fine. <laughs> so yeah, it started with a log. If you turn the page over, so you can envision a little tree, right? So how did we come from a piece of log <coughs> to this thing? Well, I tried to put a little diagram out there because I obviously don't have a piece of log anymore for it. But think bent saw boxes. Most of you have seen them think of the drawers for it and I think you would be able to follow me pretty easily what I did here. So I have a log. <coughs> obviously, you take the bark off if you want to or you leave the bark on if you think it stays on, right? Absolute thing of choice. You cut off the ends. Right? Top bottom slice, the same thing that you would do for the drawers on your bandsaw box once you have that piece cut out. Then you cut it, the inner piece, kind of through the middle. It's in all fairness not exactly through the middle, but it really, oops, thanks. It really is mostly through the middle. It doesn't really matter if the size is 50% and 50% or 40 and 50 60. As long as you can get into it, you're still fine. So, indicated in the second piece. What do you do then? You take this middle piece, this two halves you have now, and literally take, put them on the bandsaw. It's for the scroll saw, it's a little bit too high. And literally cut it out like a half moon. So if you want to envision this, you hate me already, right? No, that's fine. <laughs> put it on the table. Can put it here, yeah, that's what I was just thinking. Easier. So visualization, right? You can guess where this piece of wood came from. <coughs> it should disappear. Well, the, ma the lever is in the inside, so it doesn't disappear into it. But you literally cut it out. Not magic at all. Very simple. You have a benzer? You're good. Now you have your two half moons and you have your end piece. My idea for carrying it was obviously I wanted something tangible enough, so a little bit on the thicker side. Went to get a leather strap. Tandy leather across the road is your friend. Um, pig leather, simple, long, pretty hard and rough. So if you spent an evening in front of your TV and you're sitting there and you're massaging the leather and like massage it a little bit more because you don't want this hard rough thing on your shoulder or in your hand. It doesn't feel good. It needs to feel good. Um, Mink? Set it down so we can take it. Mink, oil, paste or beeswax. I think there are many different ways. In this case, this was something they had there and made sense to me. That, yep, and you massage it through and through to really get it to a nice feel. Because all of this is about touch and feel. Same thing, I did a good amount of sanding. Well, because I wanted a nice feel. I want something that, hmm, that's nice to touch. You know, you see surfaces, you say, oh yeah, let me touch this. That's the, what I wanted if I carry it around with me. The carrying idea was, okay, how do I do this? Well, I was a little bit concerned if the wood hits the ground or hits the tree all the time, like, 
how many dents I'm going to have in there. So at least a little bit protection on the bottom with the leather strap. And it's simply, you could say woven through, is most likely the wrong word. That's where the scroll saw came into the game. But you can see it, it's going, maybe, maybe not see it. It's going in and out and then up again. You know, it gives it, gives it a flat spot also. It gives us a, yeah, it's not... Kind of a flat spot. It's not gonna, yeah, it's, it sits on it, but it's again, it's a little bit of a protection too, if you bang it on the ground, which I'm not the most careful person with this kind of thing that happens. And I think for that, and I really use it, it has fared pretty well. Mm, we go to the next page, again. Before, you go, before yep. you go to the next page, before yes. I go to the next page, when you are using that yeah. purse, do you ever, in one day, use it that somebody doesn't make a comment about it? Rarely. That's Rarely. Right. Yeah. And usually is oh, where do you, you did you get that one? Oh, <laughs> um, oh, I mean the best one, Gibbs Gardens. They have this artisan market once in a while. I was there? I was wearing that purse, <laughs> and a guy who was doing woodwork or was selling woodwork was sitting there, and and I heard him and his neighbor started to talk. Oh, look at that purse there. Oh yeah, if, God, shouldn't be too hard to make something like that. So okay, he asked, oh yeah, where did you get it? Oh, I made it. Glue it back together, right? You glue the lower half to your sides. Fiddle the, well, maybe drill a hole if you want a very simple way of closing it. That's really as simple as you can get. It's a hole, it's a leather strip. This was a little piece of scrap wood. <laughs> well, for Hans and me, real wood, for everybody else, scrap wood, hand carved to, okay, what do I want, little bone shape, be good with it, pull it through, and you have a nice closure, nothing falls out. So, simple as it can be. There's nothing magic. The hardest part, really, I nearly would say, was the ideas, respectively, the closure at the back. Because one goal for me was I really didn't want any metal here, because again, it might snag, I have a corner, I tried to glue the leather on it and had hoped it would hold. Yeah, forget that one. No, exactly that did not work. So um, even so, I intentionally cut it a little bit on into the leather to get a better joint here. Yeah. A couple of screws. I mean, I made sure that they are nicely tied and there's nothing to snatch. But um, that was my way out to the hair. There's no metal on it. And uh, yeah, I used Whoops. a metal. Nothing happens here. A metal closure here as well. Again, pieces, just in case anybody is looking for things like that, are from Tandy Leather. I never knew about leather work. I never worked with leather before this purse. Um, if you need any help, they are awfully helpful. And I, I went in there with those pieces, literally with the pieces, like, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. They look at you like, hmm, you are sane, right? And then they dive in with you and give you, hey, you could do this, you could do that, and this is one way you could close it. Lovely, <laughs> great folks. Um, the only ones I ever tried for leather work too, so because it's like quite convenient across the road. Line your grains when you put the end pieces back onto, obviously to have it nice flowing, but everything I add. This maple was very light. It's not too heavy. It looks like you can really hit it and use it for the fence, but it's comparable light. So I'm wondering about the log when you, it was first cut, it was wet. Yes. So how did you deal with oh, that? Oh, that it dried. And yes, that log. Mm -hmm. Well, um, as I said, the log I got in Pittsburgh, which was Roughly, I would say three years before we moved, or two years before we moved, <laughs> and now I'm already at back in Atlanta for six years, and I made this purse like a year and a half ago, roughly a year ago. So, so three, I, it had plenty. First, it was drying in the garage in Pittsburgh, then it was drying in the basement in Atlanta, so that stuff was literally dry. Um, it did not twist and, <coughs> and again, if it's twisted, I mean, yeah. that's the beauty of it, right? Because if you have a, some, some movement in there, why not? As long as you can get it open and close, as long as you can get your cuts in, this is kind of the, the lovely thing about it, it's different. It's unique. But yeah, it, I think you need to dry it because if not, if it dries uneven after you cut it, you might have a, an issue with getting it open and close, but besides that, Take as twisted as you want. 
So that's what's in there really. The bot is dry. The leather strap, some screws, this little string to have the closure on it. Um, scrap wood for the closure. Here we have the wood, yeah, wood glue obviously to get the side pieces back on. One second. Pens or drill scroll, so if you have that you can do that thing. So, um, yeah. That's the 2x6. Or, um, I'm not a great woodworker, but I'm even shittier sewing person, I tell ya. Um, I had some ideas. I wanted to really do just a simple prototype with a cover made of fabric. And I had this idea, you know? So I had the shape, and which is literally 2x6, right? So if you have the next time a 2x4, 2x6 contest, you can make a purse out of construction lumber. Yours is done already, right? <laughs> Are you sure? It's more, than, it's more than two inches. Yeah, it's more than one piece, too. Oh, okay. It's glued. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, um, this one is glued there, and that one is literally glued. Okay. So you can see it. <coughs> Put it you here. You can see it's glued up. As I said, it wasn't really... It was really, the flap was supposed to be the lovely thing about it, that I gave up on that and did some redesign. So re I think one thing, and again, not fine woodworking here, but the redesign piece is, for me, really important because my planning never goes straight. I'm going zigzag, try something, doesn't work, try something else, figuring it out on the way, and how do we do this? So, yeah, a different idea of closure, the same idea of strap protecting the bottom a little bit but didn't want to do exactly the same, so I said, well, how do I attach that thing? That sounds very heavy. It's not really that bad. Um, this one is, by the way, large enough to deal with my purse. Um, the wooden one, the other one, is not, because I didn't even think about measuring. I mean, really shame on me. I'm making myself a nice purse, but I can't know my wallet, that's the word, sorry. I can't get my wallet in, at least not my regular one, because it's just like a quarter of an inch too long. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so, so I just cut that quarter inch <laughs> off the wallet. <laughs> I like the idea, but I'm not going to take you up on that one, I think. So, yeah. Um, this one does fit. And it's really, I have to admit, out of the three, the one I like the least, but because it was really totally different than what I had intended. But it was worthwhile. I learned a lot with it. And as so many things lead to other things, if you the top hollow? No, no, the top is solid. solid. <coughs> but again, same construction number. So yeah, this is the shape I made for it. So I'm what I had my ideas. How do I do this? How do I cut this? And I can't cut a straight line for my life if I don't have a pattern put on top of it. Or bend or cut, obviously. Oops. It, yeah, no, it's okay, stay there, because that's too, again, going into the sidelines, that's the purse itself, and I was like, okay, how do I do the closure without metal? Because I have metal on the other closure already, if I remember I said that, and I really intended not to have metal. So, hmm, friction is your friend. Simple piece of plywood, three square holes, I nearly said square holes is the wrong word. Rectangular. Three slots, rectangulars, and you can pull it through, and you ain't gonna pull that open. But you can easily, if you want, adjust the length. And you and used what to make those with? The scroll saw. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, the scroll saw was part of this, believe me. So, but just another little piece of learning. And if we go to the next page, you can see my wallet fits into this one. Uh -huh. And the difference between this one and that one, you put the, the straps on the inside. The straps on the inside, because I didn't want to have the exact <coughs> the same. And in this case, it's literally, if you hang this on your side, you have the straps as a guidance for the top to close. So it's not, it's clearly goes in. If it would be outside, I would have a more of a haggle to get it in the right spot. You go to the next page. As you see, the list of things you need to make that one is really short. You need lumber. I mean, the front and back are plywood. Two by six, a strap, 
and I come to that, Bensaw drill and scroll saw. So, and as I said earlier, for me, everything leads to something else. It's never really just straight. It fits pretty well, Buzz. <laughs> <laughs> He's used to carrying a purse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's a purse handling. <laughs> so, it's, again, it's just a, no, just keep it there, it's okay. Just an interesting. that for women, but there's a lot of guys carrying things, and that could be masculine enough for men. Uh, you can, I think the next one is one that you can easily translate into something that can look masculine enough. Yeah. So, and the next one <coughs> is plywood. And that's really what it is. It's nothing else but plywood. Well, nearly nothing else than plywood. Let me put this up here. What do you see? Oh, yeah. You can see it doesn't really have a closure <coughs> on its own because the flap is so stiff or stiff enough to literally hold it down. Will we go through the process of this one? If you go to the next page, it starts with a drawing because nearly everything for me starts with a drawing until I have an idea how do I do this? How do I get the 90 degree corners cut, right? That's hard enough once in a while, at least with my table saw. And at the end, right, it's a box. You ignore this piece. Everything else is in the first place a box. So you all can do boxes without any issues. Right? You have a, a slightly higher back to end. You have a slightly lower front end because you want to have the practicality of grabbing into it. And you have the sides with an arc because you want the flap to rest on something. You don't want it free-flowing there. Does your wallet fit in it? Yeah, it does. But um, it's tight. <laughs> 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 and then some things, obviously, I'm a pretty slow learner. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but no kidding. It's literally a box. If you look at the bottom, all of you can do this. Do you have a backing on that top? <coughs> Oh, indeed I do. She's going to show us that. Because if you don't go to the next, well, let's go one back. One back? One back. If you see, back, I mean, again, a lot of designing. How do I want this? What size do I want this? How large is my, uh, my wallet to fit into it? How the heck do I do this flap? And I'm, you know, I'm a planner, kind of. I'm not very spontaneous. So, okay, now if I move this, do the corners of whatever is the flap, do they touch each other? Can I do this with this angle? Far too complicated. <laughs> it's really simple. You can see I had a couple of different shapes where I tried to get my head into, does this work, does this not work? How does it work when I open it and whatever? Um, till I settled on plywood, right? It's all plywood. Little strips of plywood. All of this is stained, so all the same stain. And um, it works like a charm when you use a piece of leather for the interior. Because that's what you can see here. Did I say tandy leather? They have these bags with rest pieces. It was plenty large enough to... Can you see this? To have the flap inside. In this case, I made sure I would have the wood exposed so it would lay on the arch on the side. Um, it's glued, wood glue, the white one. I didn't bring the one, the one that um, hardens clear. Tight bond. Tight bond. The, yeah, not the yellow, the white one. Right? Sorry, didn't bring Elmer's that bottle. Just the Elmer's white glue? Yeah, yeah, something like that. So it's literally... Type on yeah, simple stuff. I just one. didn't want the, the yellow hardening because it thought that my the, the clear part that was important to me. That was really the only thing. Um, you can glue leather and wood without any issues. You can lovely. You can stain leather without any issues. Where for the other one, the very first one, I left the leather at its natural color. I just make sure it got smooth and soft and felt decent. In this case, I said, well, that's great, but I that didn't really want that color for the inner flap because I said that contrast wouldn't be nice. 
And what would I do with this strap? I did not want a natural leather color here either. But it's a little bit crumbled right now because I had it in the car with the 90 plus degree today. Crumbled up in the back, that wasn't good. But um, you just use the same stain you're using for your wood. I did not know that, learned that at the store over there. I said, okay, how do I match the color to the wood? And they said, just use the same stain. Bingo, thank you. <laughs> they are smart people and they are obviously not out for business that much because with that way I didn't buy a leather stain, right? So I just took my own. But it's really simple. You pull it through once, let it dry. Uh, that was really fabulous. Hey, Britta. Yes, sir. When you, when you glued your slats to the leather, yep. did you, you, just put glue, you just put glue on the slats so you would have a little bit so it would... Okay. Yes, yes, so I did just put the glue on that because I d obviously what you don't want is it coming through everywhere because you will see it, right? Yeah. And I'm a little bit picky, so... Do you know the word timber? Timber, that's what that is. As the timbers on a roll top, top desk. desk. That's it. Okay, I know the road, yes, the road yes. top desk definitely yes. was part of the inspiration you in there, yes. And, the and here we really up. only have the backer. Because one of my, if you keep going one page, there was this idea of, well, make it round and drill a hole. And I said, oh no, this drilling a hole in the round rod is going to get a mess, knowing oh, me. Yeah, so I one. chose that is not my best idea. So you can see I designed a little bit more. So if you keep going. So yeah, but definitely the exactly the same idea. Keeps it flexible. As, as if you look at them, I don't know if you can see it from the side. A little square and as i said i thought hmm, maybe that doesn't work but you really never make it uh, open it further than this right and guess what that's straight so you really don't need the taper but yeah i spent a while about thinking angles and does that work and i overthought <laughs> this this is not even fun and as you can see here what angle or what curve do we use up here because I wanted something that looks pleasant, I wanted something that worked, and I'm an overthinker, so I had three versions, and I have no idea which of the three I used. They might look very similar, they are not, believe me. There was a lot of thought behind that too. Go to the next page. And I, again, I need the line to, to cut along. Here you can see that's where they are finished with polyacrylic as well. Um, that's the glue up, there you can see the, the curve. But that was the way you have the leather flap here. And the leather flap is literally, and if you go to the next page, you can see it on the side. We have those. Nope, not those. The others. Yes. These little screws that are used in the back. So it's literally, let's do it that way. Three holes through the back and through the leather. Um, double sided tape is a friend because I obviously wanted the holes exactly in the leather where I wanted it in the wood. So taped it together. It's the same thing I did for the sides here. Um, drilled the holes, pulled the tape out, and then I was able to literally use the holes. Even if I would have been a little bit off, didn't matter because I'm still having the match in the leather and the wood. And so those are tiny screws? Well, these are, I don't know, tiny screws. You call them, what, screw post? Screw, screw post, okay. So it's, um, again, color-wise, it ma did match nicely to the stain I was using. Um, worked out. Literally, it took far too long to make this, because, again, overthinking and a little bit more <coughs> overthinking. But um, it's not magic. It's really not magic. There's nobody here who can't do that thing. No, I, I, I can't. Okay, because of the glue amount. You would need to come up with a different flap. I get that. Okay, you you come up with a different idea here. The rest, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, easy peasy. On the, on the glue thing, I, I do it on my car wheels when I put them on. So I, if there's any squeeze out on the glue, they don't. But if you took the side of your slats and just ran them across a piece of paraffin, yeah. that way if you get any glue squeezed out, it, it would, will not it would, stick to the wax. It stick that's so an excellent idea. Since you've already pre-finished everything, just yeah that's a good idea <coughs> yep um, hey there, I'm pretty sure there are endless way of makes this easier than the way I did it no doubt about it's that yourself. but I had a blast doing it and um, yes that's one too where I have to admit fire uses which I do regularly at least once a week 
um, I get comments. And they are not, hey, how ugly is your purse? Because people don't say that anyway, right? Um, but it's like, oh, this is interesting. I was like, hmm. What store did you get that at? Yeah, I have heard that, yes. Your husband make it for you. <laughs> Funny enough, I haven't heard that one in a while. <laughs> you should put your husband in charge of sewing. <laughs> oh, he, he would be fabulous at it. But you know, the problem is then it becomes work. And I have work already. I don't need more work. Work, I have more than enough. It's but I have heard that more, oh yeah, you can sell them. I was like, yeah, but you know what? <sighs> That's not fun. Then I can tinker around with it, you know? And I like the tinkering piece. So, what was needed for this? I mean, you heard it already. Plywood, the leather strip. Again, the neighbors here, and you send the leather down if it's too thick to make it thinner, if you like that. I didn't know that either, but the oscillating, what is this, standing? The the, yes, exactly that one. Ideal if you want to thin, and thin the, the leather strap a little. <laughs> Didn't know you, yeah, yes, absolutely. That's, hey, again, go to those guys. They tell you what you can do. It's like, holy cow. So you're saying the strap on the last purse well, was the same was thickness as the no, other purse? No, it was a thinner one, but it was thicker than it is now because I still had the feeling this is more than I, I wanted more delicate because the whole purse was a little bit more delicate, more elegant than the, the first one. And they said, oh, no, that's easy. Just send it down. I was like, <laughs> ah, send it down. Oh, yeah, that's like, I can do that. <laughs> easy peasy simple. Spindle sander, just pull it along. It sends down like nothing. Easy to do. So, did yeah. You, on the leather, did you, you said you used the same stain on yep. the leather that you used on the wood. On the wood. Yep. Did you apply anything on the leather to keep the stain from coming off on your clothes? No, nope. um, I checked if it would come off. Funny enough, it doesn't. Okay. So, I mean, it, it needs to be dry, obviously, okay. well dried. And then I used the same mink paste here, mink oil. Okay, mink on top oil of paste, it after you stain On top it? of it to get, again, a nice smooth okay. feel because it feels harder after the stain. But I have had no issues of any, I, I wear it with white clothes, I had no issues. I was a little bit concerned, but nope. Not at all. Once it's dry, it's dry. It works pretty well. Again, swimmer, easy to do. Uh, yeah, lessons learned. Redesign, redesign it a little bit more. Redesign. Again, this is not building a kitchen. This is not fine woodworking. I wish I could do that. I can't. I don't know how to do it that accurately. I'm more on the free flowing and if this is an, a millimeter or two off, nobody will ever know kind of woodworking part. Um, <coughs> Consider the size of your wallet, it's <laughs> kind of stupid thing, but it helps if you do that or get a new wallet. <laughs> Cutting it off is not the best idea, but you can laugh, I got a new wallet. <laughs> it now fits. Um, what I would do different or what I will do different with my unfinished one too, I will put a lining into it. Because while that works and it doesn't scratch anything because it's wood, um, if you put a pen in there and you walk around with that thing, it just, or your keys, they make noise. Uh. So if you put a napkin or something underneath or a tissue, it doesn't make any noise anymore. So that works, I have a tissue in my purse anyway. But um, So for the next one, there will be a lining in it and this is felt, Hobby Lobby. Mm -hmm. um, I really liked it, I liked the touch and feel of it. Could maybe work as a backer for something as well. I have to see how this with the wool flap works out. But it's definitely going to be the lining. Lining or linen? Lining. lining, sorry. Everybody understood you what I tried to in. say? Yeah. I will glue that lining in, yes. <coughs> That's the idea. So that would be a change. And just try stuff out. As I said, everything for me is zigzag anyway. So I ended up with bent weaving and some more weaving and had fun making the looms which really was the, was the fun part about it, doing it myself. Any more questions? Oh, I think I have one more page. Wait. The, yeah, the few sources I already mentioned, the leather guys across the street are really great folks. Hobby Lobby for things like that, easy peasy. Um, and obviously the internet is your friend. But the most practical, the most flexible and easiest to wear one is very clearly the last one I made. And there, with that design, you can really stretch it in all directions. You can make it more of a square one. You can go for a lock shape and have this roll top over there. I mean, opportunities are endless. There are a million of ideas out there. I mean, just get wild on it. No, it was great. <laughs>
Thank you. Uh, now, she did her presentation last time. Great presentation. We had great video, but we had no sound. Because the sound keepers did not want to pin the sound the mic in the right spot. But they did not communicate They didn't communicate either, to right? her I mean, either. You know? Like us, they just grab us and pin it on, okay? But they didn't want to grab, you know. So, so they created this. <laughs> After the last me, after the last time she did it, we created My her own mic holder. My personalized microphone holder. I mean, I'm <laughs> yes, I'm flooded. That's really. I mean, great piece of wood. If you look at that, it's beautiful. Yeah, no, so I Bob, hope that. Bob wants to <laughs> I hope that turned it now better out than the last yeah. time. Yeah, please reconsider doing one for 2020. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.